today I'm going to show you just some quick tips on how to pass the Gambler 9 challenge which is win three games of dominoes in a row. Most of these Gambler challenge are luck based. This one is kind of more skill based if you know what you're doing. I did mine here at Emerald Ranch. When I play it I only play with two players but I'm sure the same will help with uh, three players here. So, I like the Emerald Ranch one because it's just a straight game of dominoes. You just got to get to 60 points. There's no fives, threes, nothing like that. No extra rules. And the, basically, how you win a round is you place all of your tiles down. And I like having the more players because the more tiles are out there. You score points by winning the round. All the tiles left out get added up. So, you want to get to 60 points. So what I like to do here is my challenge, I like to try to save these ones here with the empty spots because there's not a lot of them. What I always want to do is try to lay them out later on in the game when I know nobody else has them. That way they can't play off that and I try to set myself up. So like I will set this one out later on with the empty spot and if nobody else has an empty spot when it comes back around I have this other empty one there now. I can set myself up for, for future moves. I can drop this one down. So we'll start off here with the six and the four, and we're gonna play it down. And basically you just wanna wait until it comes back around your turn. You always try to set yourself up to where you can make more moves and they can't. If there's only two players, there's gonna be extra uh, tiles laid out. So when it comes back around to them, if they can't make a move, they're gonna keep drawing. You're gonna want all the tiles out on the board. That way, like I said, if you win a round, there's a ton of points and you can rack up the, the score. So we're going to play fives. And plus two, you want to lay your highest ones down too. First, that way if you do lose, you have less points in your hand for them to score on. And you always want to make, you know, keep track of everybody else's tiles on there too to make sure that, you know, they're not about to win the hand or not. So we got a two and a zero. Let's see, could we can lay this two here, and then maybe if they don't play off that one, we can drop the one with it too. So we'll drop the two over there. And we'll see what they do here. So they got another two. See, that guy to the right, he couldn't play, so he had to pass. So we got a four and a two. So we could play these fours up here. I'm feeling lucky. Yeah, shut up. Six and a one. One and a three. Okay, so now we could play this here. There's already a couple empty spots, so possibly nobody can play that now. Oh, he did have an empty. All right, so, but we got lucky. He put a five, so we could play that there. Oh, here we go. All we need to do is get lucky and get a six now somewhere. And there we go. We're going to win the round. Domino, that's pure luck. No skill at all. See, I like playing with only two other players because there's going to be more points out there for you. Uh, see, like I only got seven points that round. That's not a lot. Now, you, you not only got to get to 60 to your total score to win the game, so you can lose a couple rounds if you need because you got to win three games in a row, not three rounds. So... If the guy next to me wins this next one and he's got 20 points, it's okay. I'm still in it because I can still come back and win. Now, if you're noticing that, say, the guy next to you, he's got 40, 40, 45 points or so, and he's about to win. If you're watching his tiles and he's down to, like, one tile left, when it gets to your turn, hold down circle. It'll cancel the game out, and then you could jump right back into it. And play and it won't register as a loss against you so if you've already won one game in a row two games in a row and you're going for that third and you're about to lose simply just stand up sit right back down and you're back into it and it won't reset your counter or nothing so you can start it all over again so it, it's quite simple once you get the hang of it like I said just planning your moves ahead of time trying to watch the board see what's out there you know, like I said, start off high. That way, if you do lose, you don't have a bunch of uh, 
points on you that's going to give to them. Like, that would have been 12 points right off that tile right there if I would have kept that at towards the end. Try to set it up, too, you know, to where you want to make them. Oh, shit. Oh, we ain't got nothing to play. Damn, that's already quick. But you want to make it to where they can't play nothing so you can always have, you know, a, a, a way to go. See here, we got all these empty ones. Chances are I probably have almost all of them, if not all of them. So once I start playing them down, they're not going to be able to play off of that. They're going to have to go somewhere else. And if they can't, they're going to have to pass their turn, which means I got more time to add more tiles to the board and empty out my spot. Let's see, so we got four and a two. All we got is the two here with the empty. So unless someone has an empty, they're not playing on this. And because I have so many empties, I can keep playing. So chances are that was the last empty there that he has. Let's see. We'll play the. Now we're gonna play it up there on that one. I gotta pass this time. Let's see, he passed. We're gonna try to come back around and put the two on either end. See how we have two, two, two twos out there. So no matter where that guy went, I was always gonna be able to play. Well, this is fun, huh? nope. So if we could get a one somewhere, we can get back into it. Okay. Or there's an empty. We're gonna end up winning this one. So we'll play the one here just to make two empties and possibly make both these guys pass. Okay, he had an empty. Oh, he beat us. Okay, he got lucky on that one. So let's see how many points he got. If we wouldn't have stood up, we would have been up seven. And he's going to get 17. So 17 points to seven, it's not bad. Like I said, you got to get to 60 to win. So we can afford to lose that round. Now what I would do is I'd watch him. And if it started getting to where he was getting close to winning again. I would check to see like maybe if everybody had a lot of tiles still out there. He's going to get a lot of points. Because you got to be careful. You can score a lot of points all at once. But I would also watch too towards the end to make sure like say he won again. And he was up to like 40 points. Let's see here. We'll put this one. And say he was up to like 40 points or something. And I noticed he had like one or two tiles left. I'm not going to take that chance. I'm going to stand up and sit right back down and reload my whole thing in to where it's a brand new game started off and I would just take my luck on beating him the second time around. That way he's not going to win and reset my whole counter down. So It is kind of luck based, but if you use the tips that I gave you, you'll beat this in no problem, no time. I mean, I only had to stand up one time and beat the guys. It took me like 15-20 minutes to fin finally finish it out, so... It's pretty simple to do. You just got to kind of play at, you know, whatever you're you're better at. Some people like the fives. Some people like the threes. I like this one. There's no rules, you know, that you got to follow. It's just straight basically putting your tiles down and planning out your moves ahead to try to screw the next guy over. So if you did find this guide at all helpful or useful, please feel free to like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.